Hello everyone, Kevil here once again, and Gravity Beetle is next, for no real reason. He used to be in the 17th Elite Unit, but after Boomer Kawanger died, he turned on X, brotherly revenge and all that. It's theorized that this guy is not a maverick, simply joined Dr. Doppler of his own accord. Kinda how Boomer Kawanger joined for logical reasons. As usual, this stage has some pretty nice music. I don't know if it's the fact that it's an airbase, or the fact that it's an X3 stage track, because both of those seem to denote awesome music. Just look at Storm Owl and Storm Eagle. I would also like to say right now that if I had killed Blast Hornet, this stage would be a lot easier. My god, I almost get hit by a missile. Namely for this part right here, but also for the head gunners in general. All the crates will be gone, and all the head gunners will be downgraded, making this stage much easier, because the head gunners are really all you need to worry about. For some reason, this stage always reminds me of Zoids, or maybe Gundam. I'm not sure if it's because I was playing the game around the time that show was on, so there's a nostalgic connection, or if it's just the music and atmosphere speaking to me. But for some reason, that's what I think of. X was just jumping on the corner there. And a new enemy type, Blady. They take a few more hits than Spikies, and they're slightly larger. They also do not turn around, so basically they're just an upgraded Spikey. Get your button mashing skills ready for this segment. Looks like a calm elevator ride, but no elevator ride would be calm without a bunch of head gunners to deal with. What I prefer to do is wait for them to fire off their two missiles. One. Two. And then dash forward while shooting rapidly. That'll increase the power of my shots, and give me a chance to dodge their bullets should they decide to use them. After three, you're all clear. For some reason, that's not the boss room. I never really understood what that door was there for. Also, never understood why we were just walking on giant bullets. Honestly. I think it's a throwback to Super Mario Bros. The donuts, you know? Little falling platforms. Make sure to go all the way up before you start taking those two out, because otherwise you'll get hit by the Nodor Banger halfway. And be careful, because the bottom Nodor Banger can respawn, so if you're hanging too low, he'll shoot you. And we're on to Gravity Beetle. He has two attacks in his first half of his health. One of which is the mandatory charging attack. The other of which involves throwing a gravity ball. There's one. He can throw up to two. So knowing how to dodge them is essential for this fight. His other attack is that charge right there. He's invincible while charging, which makes you think it'd be a desperation attack. But it's not quite. And he should be in half health, so we should get to see his desperation move shortly. I'll give you a hint. Uh, every other boss from X3 has the same desperation move. Well, that's odd. He, he never followed through with it. He hasn't used his desperation attack. There it goes. What took you so long? This is basically just a very low-hanging charge that you have to deal with. If you touch that gravity well at the top, it'll do a lot of damage. And if you also get hit by his charge, well, without any heart containers, you'll probably you'll probably die. Thankfully though, it's very very easy to avoid his second phase. I'm not sure why it took him so long to go through with it, but oh well. At least we got to see it. Gravity Beetle, I consider him the polar opposite of Toxic Seahorse because the first half of his fight and his entire stage is kind of difficult. The second half of the fight is where it gets easy. Killing him gives us the gravity well. Fire it off and it'll make a little black hole that'll kill enemies nearby, assuming they can be destroyed by it. Charge it up, 
and X will reverse gravity, which kills a lot of enemies by launching them into the sky. You can also use this to get certain abilities and special power-ups. And be prepared for some awesome extras and a few outtakes too. Quite a few for this stage. Enjoy! Alright, it's extras time. For this, the first thing you need to do is kill Blast Hornet. Pretty odd how that works, but it does work like that. That's why all the headgunners are now Mass Pro rather than the custom version. Their missiles no longer home in on you, and they can't shoot those bullets at you, which makes, which makes them significantly easier to deal with. All the crates are also gone, giving us access to this previously blocked off heart container. I'm going to skip to the next extras, because it's kind of hard to get to. For the next extras, all you need are the dash boots. Although I think it might be possible without the dash boots, I strongly do not recommend it. It is the frog armor, which we already saw on Toxic Seahorse's stage. Onward to the next set of extras. For the final extra in this stage, we need to go upwards rather than forwards, just after that elevator segment. Grab yourself any sort of armor. I think the... Regular armor is my favorite for this one, because it requires skillful jumping to go through. And have no fear of the puny enemies. Jump, 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 jump. Pretty much everything dies in one hit to armors, especially this wall. Which is what we needed that for. Oh look, a pink capsule! Hello, Dr. White. Enter this capsule, X. Install this arm chip. This chip will increase your attacking ability. The chip allows damage to your system to be transformed and charged as weapon energy. You will be able to use it rapidly to shoot charged shots. Remember, X, your system can only handle one of the four enhancement chips. Enter this capsule, only if you are sure you want to use this chip. And yes, Dr. Light, I am sure. Now, normally, the arm parts allow you to charge up to the orange level, but with the arm chip, you are fully charged at all times. You can either fire off two shots, or a succession shot like that. You're limited to only seven shots, though, so it's kind of lame in that sense. To charge it up, you need to take a lot of damage. So let's take some damage. Yeah. Unlike the Giga Armor from X2, it takes a lot to charge it up fully. And on to the outtakes. Also expect lots and lots of headgunners. That have missiles. I would like to say that this stage has a whole bunch of headgunner customers. Obviously mass pro if you've killed Blast Hornet. Also, all of the crates will be gone if you've... <laughs> For some reason, this stage always reminds me of Zoids. Afternoons after school, watching Gundam and Dragon Ball Z on Toonami. Getting smacked by missiles, good times! This is where headgunner customers are sent. And it's also... Wow, that was sad. Know where they're coming from, and fire accordingly. Hey look, a one-up. This particular headgunner is probably the most... One-up. So fire in between his shots, and be patient here. Oh! hitting in the back. If you fail if you fail to kill them quickly enough, dash around to avoid their bullets. I'll admit that last hit was purely luck. You're supposed to fire missiles off. Why didn't you fire missiles off? That was a quite rude of you. And a short elevator upwards. But it would be too easy if it were just an elevator. We have headgunners to deal with. Headgunners that shoot bullets at you. 
I think they're a callback to Super Mario Bros. What with the donuts and all that. Oops. Let's redo that. We want to jump over that head gunner. And then get hit anyway. Go figure. Generally, the place you want to stand is on the corner. But that doesn't always work. It just usually works. And of course, bashing straight into one doesn't work at all. He also has a ramming attack, which seems to be mandatory for X3. The only exception to this rule that I can think of, Toxic Seahorse. Oh, bummer, I dodged that one the wrong way. Oh, I got hit by him and not the ball. Son of a gun. You got some more skillful dodging to do. Now he's in his second form. Or second... Oh, I dashed right into it. I should have gone underneath. That is pitiful, because this is his easiest form to dodge. As I said, Gravity Beetle is the exact opposite of Toxic Seahorse in terms of difficulty, so I'm going to give him the exact opposite rating. Exact opposite of 50% is still 50%, so Gravity Beetle gets a 5 out of 10. His stage is where most of the issues come up, as well as the first half of that boss fight. Using the limitations I imposed on myself probably increased the difficulty quite a bit. The main issue is the head gunners, and if you've killed Blast Hornet, then not only can you skip most of them, but they're severely downgraded. I would like to add that during this fight, fatigue seems to set in hard and fast. After the first hour or two of playing this stage, my trigger finger was so badly shot that I couldn't kill the head gunners fast enough, resulting in a lot of sloppy deaths that continued for the rest of my gaming marathon, and eventually caused me to rage quit early on. Today, well rested, I took my chances and beat the stage with few problems. All in all, this is a pretty fun stage. Unlike a lot of the stages up till this point, Gravity Beetle is very involved and takes a lot of preparation to perform. You can't just wing it like I did for my first few runs of Toxic Heat Seahorse and Blizzard Buffalo. You really need to know how to get through it all, where the enemies are placed, how to take them out, and if you even should take them out. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you tune in next time. This is Kevin, signing off. Ciao!